For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. In the scriptures, there are two kinds of righteousness because there are two kingdoms. And you are citizens of both kingdoms. These kingdoms have different purpose, domain, and authority. One kingdom is given to restrain wickedness, to punish evildoers, and to protect the innocent. The other is given to forgive sins, to grant salvation in Christ, to promise eternal life with the Holy Trinity. One kingdom is earthly and temporary, and the other kingdom is heavenly and eternal. The one kingdom has to do with politics and governance, the day to day. The other deals only with the gifts of Christ. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. We, like Pontius Pilate and the rest, have a terrible tendency of confusing these two kingdoms and with it then these two kinds of righteousness. We are citizens in both, but we imagine that somehow the two kingdoms can be blended, homogenized, or transposed. But to make this kingdom, the kingdom of Christ, this world, is to risk actually putting your salvation in Christ in jeopardy. Both kingdoms have blessings, though, and they're both given by God. To live in a just and free country like our own, that is a blessing. But this country cannot give its citizens the righteousness that God demands. The death of an American soldier to protect his country and you, citizens, that is a noble gift. And it is a kind of righteousness. But that righteousness is not the righteousness that God demands. Raising your children to be generous and good and honest and virtuous. That is a kind of righteousness that this world actually benefits from. But again, it does not attain the righteousness that God demands. Your service to this church as a volunteer or secretary, lay leader, teacher, my service even as pastor, while it is helpful to you, it's service to you as a neighbor, it too does not gain the righteousness that God demands, the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. Again, wise and noble rulers, health and flourishing, vibrant and active congregations, these are blessings. And they're gifts to you from the Heavenly Father. They belong in this earth's kingdom. They are not, properly speaking, Christ's kingdom. This means then that everything that we consider holy and righteous in this world that does not yet produce the righteousness that God demands. And nor do they give you, or could they ever give you, the righteousness that entry into the kingdom of heaven requires. Again, these are separate kingdoms and set two kinds of righteousness with separate purposes, domains, and authority. Even God's law then, which we heard today in our Old Testament reading, even that law does not give the righteousness that God demands because it makes demands of you that you can never attain, commands that you can never do, requirements that you can never meet. The proper response to God's word that you heard, again in the Old Testament, to thou shalt and thou shalt not, if you want to hear that as command, is to say, who then can be saved? Matthew 19. 
according to every one of your earthly attempts, by be it obedience to God's law and the Ten Commandments, service to country, service to this congregation, service to neighbor. According to those, no one has the righteousness needed to enter the kingdom of heaven. It's just as the psalmist says, Psalm 14, the Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. But they have all turned aside. They have all together become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not even one. So then how can you enter into, the, into heaven if you do not have the righteousness that's needed? The answer is, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. The righteousness, well, it is yours, but it cannot be attained by you by any amount of effort, strength, or work. Do not think, Jesus speaking, that I came, Jesus, to destroy the law and the prophets, but I did not come to destroy them, but to fulfill them. Who then can be saved? There is righteousness to enter the kingdom of heaven because there is the righteous one, Christ. And all you who are in Christ have the righteousness God demands, given to you by his perfect obedience as a gift. He makes the demands of the law, it is his word after all, and he fulfills the, those demands for you. This is what Christ and his cross are all about. Suffering in your place, dying your death, breaking your bondage to sin, defeating the evil one for you, tearing you from the devil's kingdom and bringing you into the kingdom that is his, the kingdom of the Son. The righteousness that God demands, again, is given to you as a gift. Because Christ's kingdom, again, and the giving of righteousness, comes to you in the ways that he's promised, by the preaching of his word into your ears. Absolution spoken upon you, washed upon you in baptism, as the water in God's name are given to you. Christ's body and blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins, making you holy, righteous, in his name, by his giving. That's it. That's what Christ's kingdom is, and nothing else. So you must keep this distinction clear if you are to understand what God demands of you today. You live as dual citizens of earth and of heaven. You live in this temporary world, but you have also already been given to live in the world that is to come. Because you have, in Christ Jesus, every bit of righteousness that God demands. You have in Christ complete and full forgiveness. You have his life, which is now your life. You have salvation. The kingdom of heaven is yours by way of his giving and promise. Brethren, Paul says, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. While you are no longer of this world, you are certainly in it. You live again in both kingdoms. And God has done so that others would learn of God's grace, mercy, and love in Christ Jesus through you. Your lives are not striving to attain the righteousness, but rather to receive righteousness and to be beacons of that righteousness of Christ that you have received. Namely, forgiving others, as God in Christ has forgiven you. That's what love looks like. It looks like brothers and sisters not holding sin against one another, but reconciling before they come to the altar. It looks like enemies setting aside their weapons and their disagreement and coming to full agreement in Christ. It looks like faithful marriages. It looks like fleeing sexual immorality. It looks like your yes being yes and your no being no, turning the other cheek, 
Namely, it looks like Jesus. His love, his charity, his prayer, his humility. Therefore, just as we don't want to confuse the two kingdoms, we don't want to confuse worldly righteousness and heavenly righteousness. Jesus says, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. So all the scorekeeping, all the attain, seeking to attain righteousness in oneself, this worldly game of looking good, noble, and virtuous, that's been ended. We don't need to play that game anymore. We don't have to jockey for attention or power or reputation or importance. We don't have to look better than the next guy because we already have everything needed that God demands. And we can be content simply serving our neighbor in love where God has put us. We don't have to do this to earn God's favor because we have his favor in Jesus. We love because he has first loved us. Or as we heard from Paul today, our old self has been crucified with Christ. And so now we believe that we also live in him. Receive the righteousness of Christ, be forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen.